All right, kiddos, we are back for another day of Harry Potter, and we are going to finish up this Nicholas Flamel chapter today. Um, what we read yesterday, if you don't remember, we fa finally found out who Nicholas Flamel was. He was a friend of Dumbledore, and the reason that Harry had recognized his name was because it was actually... Um, include his name was on the back of one of Harry's trading cards in his chocolate frog box that talked about Dumbledore and it turns out that Nicholas Flamel is a sorcerer um, a wizard who helped create um, the Sorcerer's Stone and the Sorcerer's Stone is a magical substance that has a lot of special powers it can turn any metal into gold and it also can create this drink called the elixir of life and no matter anyone who drinks that becomes immortal which means they can go on to live for forever um, and it turns out that Nicholas Flamel is actually 665 years old so it is a very very good potion that this stone can make um, so Harry, Ron, and Hermione have decided that Fluffy, the three-headed dog, must be guarding the Sorcerer's Stone because um, Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel are such good friends uh, that they think that Flamel would have asked Dumbledore to keep the stone safe for him. So we're going to go on and finish this chapter. Um... Just to remind you, there are no more pictures in this chapter today. I'm sorry, so feel free to draw and just listen to my voice. Or if you'd like to, you're welcome to follow along with me as I read. My neighbors are in the hallway and they're being kind of loud. Okay, I think they're done. Next morning, in defense against the dark arts, while copying down different ways of treating werewolf bites, Harry and Ron were still discussing that they what they would do with a sorcerer's stone if they had one. It wasn't until Ron said he'd buy his own Quidditch team that Harry remembered about Snape and the coming match. So in what we read yesterday, we found out that the whole Gryffindor Quidditch team is really, really nervous for their upcoming game because they found out that Snape was going to be the referee. And if you remember the very first Quidditch game that Harry played in against Slytherin, um, Hermione noticed, or Harry's broom had been cursed, and Hermione noticed that Snape was staring at Harry the whole time. And they think that Snape is the one who put the curse on Harry's broomstick. And to make the curse end, Hermione snuck over and set fire to the bottom of Snape's uh, robe so that he would have to look away. And Ron and Hermione really think that Harry just shouldn't even play in this game. They think it's too risky because of the way Snape acted during the last game that um, he was there for. I'm going to play, he told Ron and Hermione. If I don't, all of the Slytherins will think I'm just too scared to face Snape. I know them. It'll really wipe the smiles off their faces if we win. Just as long as we're not wiping you off of the pitch, said Hermione. And remember, that word pitch, they're talking about the field, the Quidditch field. Because this is a British book, sometimes we use British words. As the match drew nearer, however, Harry became more and more nervous, whatever he told Ron and Hermione. The rest of the team weren't too calm either. Whoops. There we go. The idea of overtaking Slytherin in the house championship was wonderful. No one had done that for nearly seven years. But would they be allowed to with such a biased referee? And that word biased means that um, it's really obvious that this that Snape or the referee likes one team more than the other or really dislikes one team more than the other. So he's biased against Gryffindor, which means he does not like Gryffindor no matter what. And that's because he's the head of dun, 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 Slytherin. 
Harry didn't know whether he was imagining it or not, but he seemed to keep running into Snape wherever he went. At times, he even wondered whether Snape was following him, trying to catch him on his own. Potions lessons were turning into sort of a weekly torture. Snape was so horrible to Harry. Could Snape possibly know that he'd found out about the Sorcerer's Stone? Harry didn't see how he could, yet he sometimes had the terrible or horrible feeling that Snape could read minds. Harry knew when they wished him good luck outside the changing rooms the next afternoon that Ron and Hermione were wondering whether they'd ever see him alive again. This wasn't what you'd call comforting. Harry hardly heard a word of Wood's pep talk as he pulled on his Quidditch robes and picked up his Nimbus 2000. Ron and Hermione, meanwhile, had found a place in the stands next to Neville, who couldn't understand why they looked so grim and worried, or why they had both brought their wands to the match. Little did Harry know that Ron and Hermione had secretly been practicing the leg locker curse. They'd gotten the idea from Malfoy using it on Neville, and were ready to use it on Snape if he showed any sign of wanting to hurt Harry. Now, don't forget, it's locomotor mortis, Hermione muttered as Ron slipped his wand up his sleeve. I know, he snapped. Don't nag. Back in the changing room, Wood had taken Harry aside. Don't want to pressure you, Potter, but if we ever need an early capture of the snitch, it's now. Finish the game before Snape can favor Hufflepuff too much. Remember, the snitch is that little golden ball with wings that ends the match as soon as one of the seekers finds it and it gives the team who catches it an extra 150 points so usually that means that the team who catches the snitch is the winner the whole school's out there said fred weasley peering out the door even blimey dumbledore's come to watch harry's heart did a little somersault Dumbledore, he said, dashing to the door to make sure. Fred was right. There was no mistaking that silver beard. Harry could have laughed out loud with relief. He was safe. There was simply no way that Snape would dare to try to hurt him if Dumbledore was watching. Perhaps that's why Snape, look, Snape was looking so angry as the teams marched onto the pitch. Something that Ron had noticed, too. You never see Snape... I've never seen Snape look so mean, he told Hermione. Look, they're off! Ouch! Someone had poked Ron in the back of the head. It was Malfoy. Uh-oh, sorry, Weasley. Didn't see you there. Malfoy grinned broadly at Crab and Goyle. Do you think he really didn't see him? I think he's lying. Wonder how long Potter's going to stay off his broom this or on his broom this time. Anybody want to bet? What about you, Weasley? Ron didn't answer. Snape had just awarded Hufflepuff a penalty because George Weasley had hit a bludger at him. Hermione, who had all her fingers crossed in her lap, was squinting fixedly at Harry, who was circling the game like a hawk, looking for the snitch. You know how I think they choose people for the Gryffindor team, said Malfoy loudly a few minutes later, as Snape awarded Hufflepuff another penalty for no reason at all. It's people they feel sorry for. See, there's Potter, who's got no parents. Then there's the Weasleys, who've got no money. You should be on the team too, Longbottom. You've got no brains. If you don't know... Neville's last name is Longbottom, so that's Malfoy talking to Neville. Neville went bright red, but turned in his seat to face Malfoy. I'm worth twelve of you, Malfoy, he stammered. Malfoy, Crabbe, and Goyle howled with laughter, but Ron, still, did not dare, still not daring to take his eyes off the game, said, You tell him, Neville. Longbottom, if brains were gold, you would be poorer than the Weasleys, and that's saying something. 
Ron's nerves were already stretched to the breaking point with anxiety about Harry. I'm warning you, Malfoy. One more word. Ron! Hermione said suddenly. Harry! What? Where? Harry had suddenly gone into a spectacular dive, which drew gasps and ch cheers from the crowd. Hermione stood up her crossed fingers in her mouth as Harry streaked towards the ground like a bullet. You're in luck, Weasley. Potter's obviously spotted some money on the ground, said Malfoy. Ron snapped. Before Malfoy knew what was happening, Ron was on top of him, wrestling him to the ground. Neville hesitated, then clambered over the back of, the, of his seat to help. They're fighting. We should not fight but Malfoy is really a mean guy. Come on, Harry! Hermione screamed, leaping onto her seat to watch as Harry sped straight at Snape. She didn't even notice Malfoy and Ron rolling around under her seat or the scuffles and yelps coming from the whirl of fists that was Neville, Crabbe, and Goyle. So Ron's fighting with Malfoy and Neville's fighting Crabbe and Goyle, those big guys Malfoy's always walking around with. Up in the air, Snape turned on his broomstick just in time to see something scarlet shoot past him, missing him by inches. Next second, Harry had pulled out of the dive, his arm raised in triumph, the snitch clasped in his hand. The stands erupted. It had not it had been it had to be a record. No one could ever remember the snitch being caught so quickly. Ron! Ron! Where are you? The game's over. Harry won! We won! Gryffindor is in the lead! Shrieked Hermione, dancing up and down in her seat and hugging Par Parvati Patil in the row in front of her. Harry jumped off his broom, a foot from the ground. He couldn't believe it. He had done it. The game was over. It had barely lasted five minutes. As Gryffindors came spilling onto the pitch, he saw Snape land nearby, white-faced and tight-lipped. Then Harry felt a hand on his shoulder and looked up into Dumbledore's smiling face. Well done, said Dumbledore quietly so that only Harry could hear. Nice to see you haven't been brooding about the mirror, been keeping busy. Excellent. Snape spat bitterly at the ground. My friends, that was a long, well, there's still a lot to go. We're going to finish this chapter tomorrow. And then, da, 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 we will read Norbert on Thursday. All right, friends, see you tomorrow.